Good afternoon. I'm Brian Faust. I'm the Senior Director of Customer Solutions for the NTT Communications Global IP Network, AS2914. And I'm here today to talk to you about the Internet Route Registry and provide a Tier 1 network perspective. So why do we want to discuss this? Well, what we find out in the field today is that there's still a lot of network providers that aren't necessarily using uh, the route registry, maybe at all, or maybe not using it to the fullest extent that they could. And so this presentation is going to go over the route registry and some things that you can use uh, to start utilizing it. So what is the route registry? Well, it's a distributed database of route and route-related information. Objects are defined in a, the route policy uh, specification language, and, um, and objects in the database are publicly available for anyone. So anyone can go query this information that you put in there. So why is a route registry important? Not just for, for NTT as a service provider, but for any service provider is that it allows you to document your network in a standard format. So no matter where you are in the world or whatever ISP you decide to peer with, by having your information in a route registry, it provides a common format that everyone understands. And what, does this, what do these objects inside the route registry allow? Well, they allow for simplified ACL creation. So what we're able to do, or a lot of big service providers will do, is we'll actually query the route registry and build our BGP ACLs based upon the information that you provide. And the ultimate goal for all of this is keeping the routing table secure. So by applying ACLs to BGP sessions, we protect uh, people from making mistakes in their routing and having that propagate into the global routing table. So there's a real benefit for doing all this. So who provides route registry services? Well, there's three groups that really provide it. You have uh, the service providers, such as NTT, which provide it as part of a service to our customers. Since we require our customers to utilize a route registry, we, we provide it uh, free of charge. Uh, another big group is, of course, the regional internet registries. Uh, you'll notice that there's one registry missing, and that's LACNIC. LACNIC is the only major RIR that doesn't have a route registry. And then you also have third parties. And the largest third party route registry provider uh, is RADB, hosted by Merit. That's the most utilized one. It's a commercial one. Uh, there's also free ones out there. And then, of course, there's even one here in Brazil called TC at bgp.net.br and it looks like it's getting some new life uh, brought into it at this time. So for those of you that don't use a route registry, um, I'm gonna go through a really quick tutorial that, to kind of explain the basics about it. So there's really, to, to use the bare minimum of the route registry, there's really three essential objects that you have to worry about. A maintainer object, which defines the person responsible for maintaining the objects in the registry, of course, a route, a route object, which defines a route AS number combination, and then an AS set, which defines your customer cone. And what the customer cone is, is it's your downstream customers. So it's any BGP customer that peers with you. Uh, it doesn't include your transit providers, but it's, it's your customers uh, that peer with you. Okay, so the first object, of course, is the maintainer object, and these are the main attributes. Uh, the required attributes are in white, and the, uh, I guess the optional ones are in gray. It's very straightforward. Uh, you define your object name, and that's called a handle, and then you have a description, usually that's your company name. Then you provide an admin contact, and then you provide an email address to send any updates to. Uh, you define your authentication method, and then you have a last update field um, and a, a source database. In this example, it says NTTCOM. In my examples, it'll all be NTTCOM. But this all applies to any route registry that you use. Then you have optional fields there also. Uh, most notable in our objects, we like to use that to uh, document our security and abuse contacts. So if anyone's doing research on an issue like that, they can find out the correct contacts uh, to, to contact if they have an issue. So here's what a basic maintainer object looks like. Uh, this is removing all the optional fields. So you can see it's very straightforward. Um, and the one thing to note is that you really only have to create this once at the beginning of the process. 
and it's a manual process. So you'll actually email this in, and a human will actually create this initial maintainer for you. And then after that, for route objects and AS sets, it will all be automated. So here's a route object, and here's the attributes for that. So the first thing is, is you put the route in there in CIDR notation, uh, and then you have a description, which can be whatever you want it to be, and then you put the origin ASN. And this is the ASN that's going to be announcing that, that network uh, into the global routing table. And then, as I said before, you have the optional remarks, and then uh, we have just the standard uh, last update and uh, route registry database. So here's a couple of basic route objects using only the required fields. Uh, the first one is IPv4. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. You have your prefix, you have your origin ASN, straightforward. And for IPv6, uh, it's a very similar process. Really, the only difference is, is that you put route 6, which is in gray, uh, instead of route when, before you enter your IPv6 uh, prefix. The next object is the AS set object. And these are the attributes for that. Uh, we've got the required ones, of course, is the AS set name. Uh, something to keep in mind when you're defining your AS set name is that it needs to be globally unique. So there's like 30 some internet route registries that are, that are out there. And it's important that you make sure that it's unique between all of those 30 different databases. Uh, a problem can happen, and it's very rare, but it, it's, it's terrible if it does happen, where a service provider, when they're generating the ACLs for your AS set, uh, might pick up the competing AS set instead and build a prefix list based upon their ASNs and apply it to your BGP interface and uh, it could cause some problems. So it's, it's something to keep in mind. Uh, the other notable thing here is that in the, in the documentation, they say that the members field of this object is optional, but at, in every instance that I've seen, it's it's always been used, so I consider it to be more of a required uh, field. And you can put any combination of AS number or AS set into your uh, AS, into the AS set that you have. And then the rest of the fields are pretty standard, same as the other objects. So here's a basic AS set object. Uh, it has a, an AS number and also has an AS set in it. And these, all of these, the route object and the AS set object can be emailed directly into the uh, registry for update, which I'll show here in a second. So, so quickly, to add an object to the registry, it's pretty easy. You format your object in, in plain text, and you take your password, and you type it at the top of the object, and uh, it's your maintainer password that you created in the beginning and you just email the object in. So if it's an existing object, you just make your changes to it and you send it in and the database will update. And if you wanted to delete an object, same basic thing, except that you add a delete line uh, to the bottom of the object or anywhere in the object actually. Uh, and that's in red here at the bottom. And so here's an example of what an email would look like to update the route registry. Uh, it's on the left-hand side. So the the blue highlighted stuff would be adding a route object. So this format's very standard. Um, you can see that the password is at the top of the file, or at the top of the email. And then in the, the reddish area, that's deleting a route object. And then the green piece is uh, uh, adding an AS set. And so what happens is you send this email, and within a minute or two, you'll get a response back confirming the transaction or telling you if there's a problem. So it's it's pretty straightforward. So one thing I just wanted to note is that if you're not using a route registry today, or, or you might not be aware of it, but um, oftentimes, uh, if you're not able to create route objects for yourself, your service provider or someone along the way might have gone out and created a route object on your behalf. And we call those proxy objects. And it's really convenient, I guess, when you're setting up a new connection if someone can go do the work for you. But the problem is, because you, don't, you didn't create it, you don't maintain it. So as easily as those routes or route objects are created, they can be removed. And if you're not expecting it to be removed, you know, it could disrupt your network traffic uh, if ACLs are regenerated and you're not aware of a route object being deleted. 
So my advice is, is that uh, to really take ownership and uh, consider registering your own routes in the route registry rather than relying on these proxy objects. Okay, so then, of course, now you've entered the stuff in there, you know how to do that. Uh, the querying the route registry is very easy. Uh, some providers might have a web interface. I'm giving the, uh, the good old who is version. So you can just go to any Unix command line prompt and do a who is, and you can query your objects. Um, this example shows an AS set. That, that example is an AS set. Uh, this example is uh, for a route. There's other queries that you can do too, much more sophisticated ones, and so I've provided a URL there at the bottom uh, that can explain some additional queries that you can do. Okay, so the next thing is, is so we kind of know what a route registry is, and I've showed you how to do basic management of the route registry. But for, in a lot of cases, there's a lot of information out there. Uh, there's proxy objects out there. There's all these things that you may not know about. And it's difficult to go find this information out on your own by doing querying who is databases for different registries all the time. So I wanted to show you a way of looking at your route registry data in kind of a unified manner. And that's the IRR Explorer. The URL is there at the, at the bottom. It's irrexplorer.nldog.net. And one of my colleagues, Job Schneiders, he's uh, written a lot of this, and, and uh, it's a pretty cool tool that I wanted to share with you. So it allows you to explore the route registry and BGP data in near real time. You can search by a prefix, you can search by your AS number, or you can search by an AS set. And the results that come from that uh, provide a single view for you to look at you know, the data on one web page, and then it also provides some advice if it sees some things that don't look right. And so I'll go into that now. So of course you can search by a prefix, and uh, any prefix that you search for, it will also show you any subnets of that prefix. You can search by your AS number, and it will return all, all objects and even route table information for anything that exists in the routing table. And then you also can query by an AS set and see everything that's inside your AS set on one screen. So here's the, just kind of how the application is kind of built. Um, it receives BGP feeds every 15 minutes, and then it also has links into various route registries. And then it does, you know, it's magic and gives you a result. So here's the results, which you can't see at all, which is fantastic. Um, so <laughs> anyway, um, on the left-hand side, uh, you, ha you have your prefixes. So if you searched for a slash 16, it would show you every subnet in that slash 16. And then next to that, uh, if that prefix exists in the routing table, it will show you the origin ASN of that prefix. Uh, to the right of that, you have the route registries. And so if there is a route object for any of these prefixes in a route registry, it will show you which route registry it is and what the origin ASN is of that, of that prefix or of that route object. And then finally, in the far right column, it has an advice column which will tell you uh, perhaps ways of solving the problem as it sees it. So by clicking on a prefix in the results, which I have here up at the top, uh, you can drill in and you can look at just like this particular subnet that you're, you want to drill into. So that provides a little bit more detail on what's being returned. In addition to that, you can also click on the ASN in the BGP column and it will actually go out to another NLNOG uh, website called the ring.nlnog.net, and it will actually pull in all the BGP feeds that it has available for that prefix to give you a nice view uh, from a global perspective of where that prefix is in the network without having to go out and maybe query route servers or do something like that. And then it also provides advice. And so the advice, as you see, is, is color-coded and um, so green is good. It means that uh, you have a route object with the right origin ASN and the right prefix length. So those are good. Ones that are yellow, uh, that means that there's some sort of conflict. It, it could mean that there's a route object that exists for the same prefix length, but with a different origin ASN. And in those sorts of cases, you wanna look at maybe going and cleaning those up. 
The idea is to get rid of any garbage that's in the route, in the route registries. There's also red, which is a warning, and that usually means that there's a prefix in the global routing table that doesn't have a route object. And so that's an easy one to fix. You go create a route object. And then blue is informational, and that's more of a case where there's a route, there's a route object that exists, but there's nothing in the BGP table. So that's up to you to kind of decide if that route object needs to be there or not. There might be cases where you've registered slash 24s for your slash 20, and you may need to announce more specifics from time to time. And you know, there may be a reason to have that route object there and not being utilized. So here's, a, here's an example of perfection. So this is actually RIPE's ASN. So they're not a service provider, so you would expect them to, uh, to have all their route objects in order and registered properly. And then here's like, uh, this is NTT's ASN. So you know, being a service provider, it's gonna be much more much more fluctuation. It's gonna be an ongoing process keeping this stuff up to date. As you have customers, as you're assigning out IP addresses to customers and things like that, things are gonna constantly be changing. But it's good to go through there on a regular basis and at least kind of see what's out there. Um, from using this view, I mean, I can show you in this example here, there's some red. So I know that someone on my team has made a mistake. And so I can reach out to them and tell them, hey, you need to go cre create route objects for those networks. And even in other cases, I've even seen cases where um, we've been able to identify networks that maybe someone's using without our permission. And we're able to go and then shut down those sorts of uh, activities. So it's a, it's a pretty nice tool. All right, so we've talked about you know, what the route registry is and how to create and maintain objects and also now how to audit and look at those uh, in a simplified manner. So next I wanna talk about uh, automation tools using route registry data. But, but before I talk about the tools, I just wanna talk quickly about how NTT does it because it, it, it'll make sense here in a minute. So NTT has our, our own internally developed SDN platform called GUMS which performs automatic, automated network configuration. And GUMS uses the route registry data to build our customer prefix list. And, so, and we use this data and we update our prefixes every night. And for us, automation isn't optional, it's a requirement. We've got thousands of BGP sessions and hundreds of thousands of customer routes that we would have to maintain. So there's just no way of doing this manually. And so we use the route registry data to help us automate this entire process. So for us, in our process, at, at 100 UTC, we take all the route objects that exist at that time, and we go out and we automatically generate new prefix lists for every BGP session on the network. And then at about 400 UTC, we go out and we apply those ACLs to every BGP peering session um, across the network. And then we also do an automated soft clear of all those sessions. And so what makes this great is that it's a completely automated process. And so from a customer perspective, it's good because they don't have to contact us to update our ACLs. It happens automatically. Once they learn the timing, the rest of it's easy. Um, and then it's also great from a NOC perspective for us because our NOC you know, doesn't have to do that extra work and they only need to be involved if there's a, a you know, a special request, like if there's an emergency prefix list update that needs to happen during the day outside of these hours, the knock only has to focus on that, and the r routine updates can happen without any, anything from their side. So there's a couple of open source tools to assist with automation that are kind of interesting. So open source tools, the ones I'm gonna talk about, generate prefix lists, so it's pretty simple. Um, the idea is that you could modify these in, to, to put as part of your internal systems, or you could also consider using them as like a standalone script to maybe just improve a particular part in your process internally. Uh, both of these scripts only take a couple of minutes to configure, and uh, the big deal is that's that you're, you're putting route objects to work for you. So the first one is BGPQ3. Uh, it's hosted on GitHub, and it's just a simple BGP filter prefix filter creator. Um, some people are using it in conjunction with, with another open source project called Napalm, and I've listed that URL here as well, and, and, that, and these two 
little applications combined could not only uh, generate your prefix list, but maybe also automate the process of loading them to your router as well. So here's the output of that. It's just command line. Uh, just generates a v4 prefix list, and then it does them separately. So you have a v4 prefix list on top, and then you implement a different flag to get the IPv6 prefix list. The other one is IRR power tools, and it's also hosted on GitHub. And this one's a little bit more uh, comprehensive. So it still builds prefix lists like the other one, but it also has some additional tools which are interesting. Uh, one of them is, is that it will track uh, your prefix lists as they're generated, so it puts them into CVS and does diffs every time they change, so you can have a complete history of that prefix list over time, which is nice. And it also has some email functionality in it, uh, which is good. So if you're, let's say your upstream provider isn't using the route registry to generate their ACLs, it actually has scripts in here that can, you can run to go notify your upstream provider, hey, I've got these networks that are in my ACL now, please update. And so it, it's, a, it's a pretty nice tool. And again, it's also command line, and uh, you just issue the command. Uh, in this particular tool, you can define an ASN and an AS set behind the scenes. And so you simply run the command, and uh, it generates both the V4 and the V6 list together. And what's nice about it, like in this case, I'm just using an iOS example, but it even puts the conf t at the top and the end and the right mem at the bottom. So you can literally just cut and paste this thing into your router and update, update your router. And so, so that's pretty nice as well. All right, so we talked about what, why a route registry is good, and we've talked about how to maintain your objects in the registry, and, and we've talked about how to audit your objects in the registry, and now we've also talked about some open source tools to help you uh, use those objects for something good. And so the last thing I just wanted to talk about was to introduce you to something called manners. So manners is the mutually agreed norms for routing security. And uh, the URL is here, it's part of the routing manifesto. And it's, it's sort of like a, it's an initiative to kind of solve some problems that exist on the internet today. And three of those problems are, it's uh, incorrect routing information, uh, spoofed IP addresses, and then also problems related to coordination and collaboration between network operators. So what, so what Manners is, is it's, uh, what they want you to do is that they want you to commit to helping to solve this problem and be part of something bigger. And so to participate, of course, you can read through the document and see what it entails. But what they really want is they want you know, to agree uh, and implement at least one of the uh, four actions in the majority of your infrastructure. And so this is where it gets kind of interesting and kind of ties back into the route registry. So one thing that they want is that they're really encouraging everyone to be filtering their BGP sessions of their customers. So as you've seen in this presentation, there's a really easy way of doing that using the route registry and some of those open source tools. Uh, of course, there's anti-spoofing, which doesn't relate to the route registry, but it's something that's good to help you know, reduce the number and the, the volume and size of certain DDoS attacks. And then of course there's coordination, which is slightly related to route registry information as it exists, maintaining your contact information and keeping it up to date. But it also means that if you're inside the peering DB today, uh, keeping that information up to date is a, a really good a way of uh, tackling the coordination piece of this. And then finally, global validation, that's the route registry. I mean, that's keeping your routing information up to date in the route registry. So if you're using the route registry today and you're implementing these other features in your network, um, you should really consider uh, you know, signing up and being part of this initiative. It's really the, the best practices today for, for network operators. And so then, of course, uh, you know, if you are a participant, you, uh, you get your name listed on a web page and everything's really cool. Um, right now, there's only one, one Brazilian network operator that's part of Manners, and so it would be, it would be really cool to see, see more Brazilian operators uh, sign up. So, in summary, uh, you use the route registry to document your network in a standard way. Um, 
providers can use the route registry to build our ACLs to protect, our, protect the upstream network in the global routing table. Um, we can use the IRR Explorer to compare the BGP table to route objects out there to help audit uh, those items. You can utilize open source tools or write your own uh, to automate certain network tasks using route registry information. And you can get recognized for your commitment to routing security by participating in manners. So that's my presentation. So any questions? Hi, this is Tiago from UPX. Uh, are you aware of any way we can download the whole registry for research and mapping graphs? Or no, I have to query each route, each, ob each object. Um, so, you know, some, some route registries mirror multiple registries in one. Um, I think that what you could do is if you go to IRR.net, you could probably contact various registries and get and request to download the information. There's not one single place to go download it all that I'm aware of. So that. Can I request to you <laughs> to download your base? <laughs> I, I, I'll talk to my colleagues and see what's possible. But that, that's what makes the IRR Explorer kind of neat is that it does have all that information in one place so you don't have to go do that. I know it's not what you're asking, but it's, it's one way to accomplish, at least see what's in those registries all at once. Thank you. Yep. All right. Well, uh, if you guys have any further questions, uh, feel free to come visit me at the NTTCOM table at the Beer and Gear. And thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>